What's going on guys? Stefan, SNE's Garage. Today we're here with our 2021 Toyota Camry TRD. And uh, as you've seen in some other videos, uh, this thing's away for the winter and it's just kind of sitting in the garage. And I did uh, mention that we're going to start using this time to do some upgrades and tweaks. And uh, what I have here is our next upgrade for this car. Uh, the factory system, especially the non-JBL, is uh, lacking to say the least. Um, it sounds good in the highs, but it doesn't have much base. Uh, so we're going to address that today. So what I went with here is the JBL base hub. They make two different base hubs. They make the base hub pro, which is a powered subwoofer and they make the base hub stadium. And that is what we went with here. The base hub stadium is good for 600 Watts RMS, uh, which is plenty more power than the, uh, the base hub pro, which is the powered one. Um, is rated at and I feel that I have a little bit more headroom and a little bit more customization options when I can choose my own amplifier uh, so that's why I went with this route uh, this guy was right around 500 bucks I think it was 419 dollars uh, I got it on Crutchfield uh, we went ahead and we got an audio control LC2i which is basically an active line out converter. What this does is it takes the high, the high level outputs from the factory uh, amplifier and or radio and it converts them to low level inputs that your amplifier can accept. And what's great about this guy is it can actually restore the bass that your factory radio pulls out of the signal. What these factory radios do as you turn the volume up, they pull the low frequency out of the music to protect your factory speakers. And uh, when you're trying to amplify that for bass reasons, uh, that's not ideal. So this will help address that. And then we went with an Alpine SA60M, which is rated for 600 watts RMS at 2 ohms. Now what's great about this bass hub is it is a dual voice coil subwoofer and each voice coil is rated at 4 ohms. Now if you wire this correctly, we're going to go through that, you can present that amplifier with a 2 amp load or a 2 ohm load from this guy here. So we're going to get all 600 watts into this sub and it's going to sound great. Now this is going to be a little bit of an involved install so I am going to break this up into steps. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to take our trunk apart and we're going to make sure this thing even fits before we go any further because there's a couple of things you have to do. You have to flip the spare tire upside down and it fits right inside of that. So let's get into the trunk. I'm going to show you what I've, uh, you know, what I've come up with so far, what you're going to have to do to make it fit, and I'm going to show you it in the car. Very quickly, I do want to thank the guys at Auto Image on 10 Chambers Bridge Road in Bricktown, New Jersey. They are the only ones I let touch my car. I tinted my windows through them on this car. Any car I get that I get tinted windows, they do. Um, I basically, I, I, I Touch space with the owner over there, Mike Tomei. He's a great guy. If you need anything, remote starts, audio, anything, go see him. Um, and he was the one that kind of pointed me in the direction of this amplifier. I was looking at a Kenwood that put out 500 watts RMS, and uh, he pointed me in this direction. He had a couple in stock, and he hooked me up. So, like I said, if you need anything, go see them. Uh, he also hooked me up with this amplifier kit. I did go a little overkill. This is a four-gauge wire. Um, and I kind of did that because there's some other stuff that I have planned that's going to need a little bit of power in that trunk. That's for another video. Uh, so I can always add a distribution block to this guy and, and I have that many more options for power in the trunk. So like I said, if you need anything, uh, remote starts, windows tints, audio, video, lift kits, anything you want, lowered airbag suspension, go see uh, the guys at Auto Image, 10 Chambers Bridge Road, Brick County, Jersey. All right, guys. So like I said, in order for this to work, you have to flip your spare tire basically upside down and the base hub fits right in the hub of your spare tire. Now what I had to do because the spare tire was rocking around a little bit is I put some felt around the outer edge of the spare tire and I did have to grind some of this uh, vibration damping material down just to give myself a little bit of, uh, of room for the spare tire. So now what's going to happen is your spare tire is going to come down into the spare tire well and it's much more stable than it was before it was rocking like crazy before so that's good and now what we're going to do is we're going to drop the base hub right into this and then it comes with this threaded rod that basically will thread 
right into your factory uh, spare tire holder. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to get the base hub, I'm going to set it in, I'm going to show you exactly how it looks. Alright guys, so here we have the base hub installed where it belongs, like I said, right in the hub of the spare tire. And we have our two wire leads, the two red and the two black, twisted together as a pair because that's how we're going to present uh, the amplifier with a 2 amp load. So we have that all set. Now depending on the car that you're putting this in, my car has a little styrofoam tray that sits on top of the spare tire that houses your tools for the jack, the jack itself, and the lug wrench. I had to make some modifications on that for it to sit relatively flush in the trunk so it didn't look like it had a bulge. And I'm going to show that to you now. I basically, with an X-Acto knife and some brute force, had to cut out the center of the foam insert that goes in my trunk in order for this thing to sit in there flat. So we're going to go over here now. We're just going to test fit it. I'm going to show you exactly how it fits. So it's not by any means perfect, but it'll do. Once the, the rug is on there and everything, it's going to look nice and flush. And this thing is relatively you know, flexible, so we'll be okay there. So we're just going to go ahead. Right now, we're just going to put the floor mat and the, and the insert back in. Make sure everything's good there. And uh, that's probably going to be it for tonight. Like I said, I wanted to make sure I could make this thing fit before I really started going crazy. So as long as everything's good, uh, we're going to move on to the wiring aspect. We're going to start looking for a place in the firewall to run our 4-gauge wire. And uh, from there, after we run that wire, uh, we're going to find a spot to ground the amplifier. And then we're going to move on to where exactly we want to pick up the, uh, the audio signal from the factory stereo. I'm still debating with myself if I want to do it behind the dash or if I want to pick up the back door speakers from over here on the B pillar. I think that might be easier and it would require less runs of wire. So we might go that route. I have to look at some diagrams, figure out what the speaker colors are, you know, the wires for positive and negative on left and right because we have to pick up the left and right channel and uh, we'll take it from there. So let's get this all set up. I'm going to show you how it looks with the liners in. It's, it's like it's not even there. All right, guys, so believe it or not, our Base Hub Pro is in here underneath our floor mat. And uh, we're just going to shut the trunk for now. Like I said, our next step, when I get to it, today, tomorrow, the next day, whenever, uh, it'll be two seconds for you guys, is we're going to start, go ahead, and uh, finding out how we're going to run our power wire back to this thing. Now, what's cool about this Audio Control LC2 is it has a signal sensing uh, circuit in it that basically this thing will turn on automatically as soon as you turn your factory radio on. And what's nice about that is you can share that circuit with your amplifier. So I don't have to run a separate remote wire for the amp. I can just run it right off of this, which is going to make the install that much easier because I don't have to go looking for a 12 volt switched uh, circuit in the car. So, like I said, we'll see you in a couple days. It'll be two seconds for you guys. We'll start running the power wire, and we'll start uh, setting up our LC2i. All right, guys, we're back with you. Uh, it is freezing in this garage right now. It's about 11 o'clock at night, and I've been brainstorming all night uh, trying to figure out how I'm going to get this amp into the trunk of this car. Uh, because this is the TRD version, back in the trunk panel, you'll see I have the trunk completely torn apart. Uh, we have this very large V brace, and because of that brace, our back seats don't fold down. And because the back seats don't fold down, that is all just cushion right there behind a little piece of felt. So there's nothing there for me to screw to. You can see I drilled four small holes here, and I was going to mount my amplifier there. I had it all mounted up. I went to test fit it, and when I shut the trunk, this spring right here was touching the amp, and I wasn't happy with that. So my next move was going to be, hey, let's try to put the amp under the uh, passenger seat. But then I got an idea. So what I did, I want to show you exactly what I did. This piece right here is basically a felt cover, more or less, for that V-brace. So what we did here is we drilled four holes in it, and I got a piece of cardboard, or cardboard, um, plywood that I also drilled four holes in, and we're basically going to sandwich this, we're going to put the, the plywood on the back, the amp on the front, and we're going to use the plywood basically to support the amplifier, and that should work, so I'm going to go ahead and test fit this, see how it fits, 
if it's good, it's good. Then we can start moving on to our uh, line out converter, which I'll probably get to tomorrow or the day after. And then we can try our, uh, you know, get our wiring set up. So let's see if this works. And I'll be right back with you if it does. All right, guys. So this is what I came up with. We got the amp here screwed in. And on the back, we have our plywood. So let's, uh, let's go see if this thing fits in between that V-brace. I'm pretty confident that it will. All right. So that actually worked flawlessly. It's uh, pretty much centered. It fits. And uh, it looks really good. So tomorrow, like I said, we're going to start getting the wiring from the front of the car to the back. We're going to start seeing what we can do to get this thing hooked up. All right, guys. So here's where we're at right now. Uh, this has taken a lot of trial and error. Uh, but I basically, I had to make a slit in this grommet on the outside here and on the inside. And you'll see right now I have a coat hanger coming out of the grommet. And the coat hanger is also in the car up here. So what we have to do now is tie basically our amplifier wire to the end of this coat hanger and pull it through. Then we're going to run it down the kick panel behind the B pillar back into the trunk. Alright guys, as you can see, wire is through the grommet, and it is into the cabin over here. So now what I'm going to do to help this thing slide in, because I don't want to damage that grommet, I'm just going to lube the wire up. I have some white lithium grease here. I'm going to put some gloves on. I'm just going to kind of lather the, the wire up, pull it through the rest of the way, and into the trunk. Alright guys, so we got the positive connected. We have our inline fuse set up. You're always going to want to put your inline fuse within the first foot or so of the wiring because the fuse isn't there in case the amp overheats. It's there in case the wire grounds out somewhere. That fuse will pop before your battery melts. So always put that as close to the battery as you can. We have ours right there. I'm just going to get some of that black wire loom, clean this up real nice, make it look original equipment, maybe tuck this you know, fuse down a little bit further. Uh, but that's going to be it for today. Um, we still have to run our wire all the way down into the trunk. I got to take a little bit of a break. I've been out here for a while. That uh, that grommet was a little tricky. I have bigger hands. You can see my hands got kind of beat up trying to get back there. But everything's good. Um, so yeah. All right, guys. So we got our wire ran all the way down the driver's side kick panel. I got all the panels back in already. So we ran it through here, through the back side, under the back seat. We're gonna go back into the trunk of the car. I'm gonna show you where I'm at so far. So, like you saw, my amp's mounted here. I have my power coming in from the back seat. I don't like to cut the excess wire off. I kinda like to, you know, keep it somewhere in case I ever need this in another car or if I decide to move the amp to a different location I like having my extra wire if you follow this we ground it up here to one of the bolts where the uh, OEM subwoofer would be and right up here is where I opted to mount my um, LC2i line out converter it'll be nice and easy to make my connections there I'm just gonna run the wires that way down behind that trim panel here and then into the amp and make it look real nice so uh we still have some, you know, tweaking to do. I am waiting for a wire harness. I actually ended up buying a wire harness that's going to patch into behind the radio. I know I, I said I didn't want to do that. Uh, but I also don't want to cut into the factory wiring on this car if I can avoid it. And this is made by Taco Tunes, I believe. They're like a Toyota aftermarket audio equipment outfitter. Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to plug into the back of the radio and it's going to tap into the rear speakers. And it comes with 17 feet of wire. So what I'm going to do with that is route that down the passenger side because you don't want to run your power wire next to your audio wire. It can cause interference. Um, so I'm going to run that all the way down back here into our line out converter. And then we're going to use this signal sensing technology of this line out converter to turn this amplifier on and off. So I don't need to run another remote wire. Uh, we'll just run the remote wire out right from the, uh, the audio control 
into the amp it'll look real nice it'll work nice and uh, that's kind of what we're going for so I'm kind of at a, a dead head here until um, that harness comes in hopefully it comes in this week or next uh, but we're supposed to be getting some snow this weekend so again this car ain't going anywhere there's no rush it's safe in the garage I got the Dyson heater over there and I got another little heater on my toolbox I had them cranking today because I was out here for a little bit so it's a nice it's a nice 72 degrees in here while we're working so uh, we'll be with you as soon as I get that harness. We'll fin uh, finish this install up. So I was going through my toolbox looking for some things, and I actually found a bunch of Dynamat that I must have had from one of my previous cars. I don't remember which car, but um, I didn't really have a whole lot of it, and I couldn't make it look perfect, but I don't really care because it's where my spare tire goes. Uh, so this should help with any you know rattles or anything. It does kind of make this sit in here a little bit better. So unnecessary step you don't necessarily have to do this I just had some laying around so I figured you know what why not um, we're just in the middle of, of wiring up our LC2 line out converter I'm gonna get power to it from the amp and then I'm gonna use the remote out from the LC2 to go into the amp and that'll you know power the amp on and off alright guys so it's been about a week you'll see like I told you in the last clip we got our power coming out from the power wire in the amp going to power the LC2 on and the ground doing the same thing. Um, we did just find out that our harness is going to be in today. Uh, that plugs into the back of our radio to get power, or not power, sorry, signal from the you know the speaker inputs to the LC2i, uh, so it can do its thing. But we are done on the driver side. I'm not going to run any more wires through the driver side because you don't want to run your signal wires next to your power wires. It can cause interference. So I'm just going to go ahead and start putting the driver side of the trunk back together. And then I'm going to make a separate video for the radio removal on this car. All the videos that I found were from the 2018 to 2020 uh, Camrys. And the 21 has a different radio setup. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to make another video. I'm going to link that below. We're going to take this radio out. Um, we're going to do it nice and neat so we don't scratch or damage anything. And uh, we're just going to wait for our harness, plug it in. And we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to run it down passenger side. Alright guys, so we got our Taco Tunes harness installed. You'll see it just plugs into your factory harness and then this end plugs back into your radio. Now they did change their design for this harness and did not update their website. They now only tap into one of the front channels, which I don't know if I'm happy about. They tell me it'll be just fine, so we're going to try it that way. If it doesn't work the way I want it to, these two gray wires are the other front channel that I can tap into on their harness, so I'm not messing with the factory uh, wiring of the car. So what they want you to do is run this back to your line-out converter, these two wires, install it into the left channel, and then make two jumpers to jump it over to the right. So the line-out converter thinks it's getting two channels. So we're just going to go ahead, start routing this wire up behind the dash, down the kick panel, down the uh, foot panels, and into the trunk. So let's uh, go ahead and get that started. We'll be back with you when we're in the trunk. All right, so, so far we've ran it here, back behind this. We're sticking out here behind the vents. We're gonna go under this trim panel here and start coming up behind this. I just need to go get my trim panel tools and pop this out so I can get in there. Then we're gonna take this off, this off. Uh, we're gonna try to not have to take the B-pillar cover off. I'm gonna try to snake them through and then we'll get the, uh, the other floor, you know, panel off get them wires in the trunk all right guys so we got the wire routed behind here alongside the factory wire harness right up into about here I'm gonna bite the bullet pull this uh, B pillar cover off and then we're gonna pull the back seat kick panel off and we're gonna go ahead and get this wire back into the trunk and over to our LC2 high all right so the wires down past the B pillar down the passenger side rear kick panel and you'll see I have my trusty coat hanger hanging out from behind the seat I use that to fish the wire back instead of taking the seats out so if we stick our flashlight down here and shine in we should be able to see our purple wires just gotta push them up a little bit more and uh, we pull it right in alright guys so we got our line out converter all wired kinda neat neatened up them wires a little bit uh, let's see I'm going to plug the radio in. We're going to see if it works. Alright guys, so we got everything back together. All of our interior panels are back in. 
I did have to take my rear spoiler off because it was vibrating like crazy, and I don't really like it that much anymore anyway. Um, and we got the whole back here done. Let's not forget our car keys. I took my child seats out, so I had some more room, so I got to put them back in. But you open the trunk here, you'll see how nice and clean the install looks. I still have a little bit of tidying up to do with those two wires, uh, but it looks, for what it's worth, everything looks pretty good. Just can straighten that out a little bit, but we'll get there. But yeah, everything looks good. So let's uh, let's go turn that radio on, see what happens. As you can see, it bumps pretty hard. Everything looks good. Not too many rattles. I do actually have to turn that gain down a little bit because it's a little much. But this thing hits a lot harder than I was expecting. It's rattling my toolbox. So, with that being said, if this video helped you install your uh, subwoofers in your amplifier and your 18 to 22 and so on Camrys, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. We're not done with this audio system yet, so stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be revamping a lot of things in here.